the terracotta warriors of China. I'll just digress slightly. I'm trying to take out chunks of the lecture to get to the points because we just won't have time. But uh, Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor of China, lived around 220 BC before Christ, and he built the, the great pyramid uh, in uh, Xi'an in China. They say he was a tyrant, but he wasn't, of course. Uh, he was a reincarnation of Jesus, just like all the other super gods, I call them. One of the books I published, which isn't here, uh, from 1997, called The Super Gods, showed that these people were gods who came to earth to teach us about spirituality. And they came several times. Jesus came back several times. Uh, first of all, he came in around 3000 BC as Krishna, the Christos, the Christ. And each time he left the same messages behind. Krishna came back eight times. The ninth time he came back as Buddha. So we know Buddha is a reincarnation of Krishna. But the ancient archaeological treasures from around the, the world of the sun-worshipping civilizations of Earth, we're talking about the Egyptians, the Peruvians, the Chinese, the Celtic people of Ireland. Uh, they all worship the sun because they understood that the sun uh, created fertility on Earth. Every time the sun goes round, every 28 days, females menstruate. Uh, and this is why the sun is associated with fertility. But of course, the North Pole is moving backwards as that's going around every 28 days. The North Pole takes 37 days to go around once. So we're getting a mixing up of this radiation from the sun. And if we look at the, the shapes of these faces, the archaeologists say that the, the face shapes correspond to a different word in the Chinese alphabet. And if we look at the words, we come out with this phrase, focus the eye on the soldiers in the covered tunnels. These are the terracotta warriors at Xi'an. Read the meaning of the national Chinese characters differently. Use your mind to understand a story which spans from the beginning of time until now, a story about the sun and God. And if we look at the tombs and the layouts of the tombs at Xi'an, for example, this one as an example, what we see is that uh, we have a, a chariot here, for example. This is a chamber, chamber number three at, at Xi'an, where the terracotta warriors were found in 1974. It's full of soldiers, and here's a chariot. I've just simplified the diagram a bit here. Now, the resolution's not good enough on there, but if we were to take that chariot straight out, the wheel would bang against the wall. So they're trying to tell us something. In order to get this chariot out of the ramp, up the ramp and out of this, this uh, base, the soldier's barracks, this is a barracks for the soldier, in order to get the chariots and the horses out, we've got to turn left. Otherwise, we're going to hit that wheel on the wall. And they're trying to tell us, if you look at it, they're full of soldiers now, Here's a, the, uh, so there's a four horses and a chariot here. If we come out of the ramp and turn left and go left, that's what they're trying to tell us. These are the formation of the soldiers in the tomb, life-size soldiers, the terracotta warriors, in one of the chambers at Xi'an in China. And if we try to make sense of that and reconcile it, what we see is two, three, four, zero. Two, three, four, zero. Zero. There are two soldiers here, three soldiers there, four soldiers there, no soldiers here. If we go counterclockwise, follow the chariot out of the, out of the uh, underground chamber. 2,340 revolutions of the planet Venus, which is 584 days, is 1,366,560 days, which is the same number that we had in the matrix from... Palenque in Mexico. Lord Paycal at the bottom. We had 1366560 uh, days, the birth of Venus number. Here we have 144. Here we have zero. There's no troops here. Two rows of 10. 144,000. It's 144,000. These are the ones who will go to heaven. In the book of Revelation, it says in the Bible, those with 144,000 carved on their foreheads will go to heaven. And that's why the picture of Lord Paykal had 144,000 on his forehead. 
Now, I also went down to Bolivia. This is when I was doing Viracocha and had a look at uh, all of the archaeological artifacts in the museum. And there's a picture of Viracocha. This is a statue of the, in the temple of the Kalas Asaya, one of the temples. And this is a statue of Viracocha with a male in his right hand and a female in his left. And again, we can have a look at what that's trying to tell us. So that's the picture of Viracocha. We take the mirror image, of course, just like all of the others we've been doing with these trans. They all use the same technique. So that's Viracocha. Take the, mir take the mirror image of Viracocha. The instructions are all contained in this. Put one on top of the other. Excuse me. Okay, just a sec. Let's go back to that one. Viracocha has a picture of a male in his right hand standing up and a picture of a female upside down facing downwards, going down. If we follow those instructions, this is from Tiwanaku, the gateway of the sun, a picture of Viracocha, the sun god. If we follow those, turn, take a picture of the man which is there. So we start off in that position. He says, take a picture of the man. These are instructions. Then take the mirror image. That is the mirror image. Then turn the woman, that's the female, opposite the man. Have a look at the picture. Turn one into a female, the opposite of a man. It's now a mirror image. Turn the female upside down. Put the female on top of the male. And now we see Viracocha with his tongue out, which was the mark of the sun god, and one eye open. And when we move the transparency slightly, his eye closes and the other eye opens and his tongue moves to the other side of his mouth. When we move it back, just on this epicenter here, swizzle it back again, we lose this eye, this eye opens again, and the tongue moves to the other side of his mouth. This is telling us if we stand in front of the gateway of the sun at Tiwanaku and close one eye at a time, we can measure the angle of the sun. And what they're trying to tell us is that the, the, Earth's ang the Earth tilted on its angle because of the sun. In other words, whenever the sun changes its angle, the Earth tilts on its axis upside down and causes earthquakes. And this is why the Mexicans believed that the Earth would destroy itself on five different occasions. And we are now living in the fifth age of the sun. This is the sun shield of Monte Olban, which is in Mexico. Here we have 85 loops, four arrows, and 11 pendants. And if we multiply it four by 85 by 11, we come out with 3,740. If we multiply that by the number of days in a year, 365.25, we come out with the same number of the sarcophagus in Palenque, 1,366,040. So, there has to be more to this than we imagine. So, if we put them both together like this to start off with, I call these pictures Maya transformers because they transform into other pictures. And we put them upside down like this, we come out with a picture of the gateway of the sun at Tiwanaku. Now, we can see the gateway at the top here, with this particular architrave is carved. And we see the reflection in Lake Titicaca here. And we see a triangle here, which will, when we put that onto the computer and flip it, it'll give us a Star of David, the mark of Judaism. Down here we've got a character. He's actually leaning down, looking at, at us like this. And this is the Mayan god called Jaitikutli. There's his eye, his eye, his triangular nose, and he's got a helmet on his head. We saw him earlier when we saw the picture of the feathered boy with a hat. And we had the picture of Jaitikutli leaning down with a a vessel of cremation. They used to cremate people on, on his back. 